that is just fine with me. Modus ponens is the plan. Serve you logic, I am the man. Twang Hopper writes, What does it mean to be a deconverted man? Somebody has editing skills, but what is the message? It is always easier to destroy something than to build something. Perhaps building unity is the concept of God. Remember, the idea of God is different than religion. You seem like a kind and intelligent human being, and I watched this debate. I also watched Matt go over his ideas of how the debate went afterwards. Why did he feel a need to do that? We are all born knowing truth. After that, everything becomes jaded and twisted. Human beings are very good at that. We all need to be skeptical, but I wouldn't want to define myself as a skeptic because for me, it makes me feel like life has no meaning and there is no such thing as truth. I have also watched Bill Meyer, who describes himself as an atheist as well. He makes some joke and people laugh and he gets good feelings for doing so, as if he is a god. Typically, his jokes are insulting other people as being stupid. That, to me, seems to be a common theme among atheists. They are superior to other human beings with belief systems they can't find silly and ridiculous, yet cannot prove their stance the same as others can't prove their stance. Yeah, maybe a magician and trickster has the meaning of life down pat. They are usually very good at avoiding being pinned down in any way. They generally don't, however, offer anything of meaning for those that seek meaning. Skeptics come out of the woodwork all the time. Again, it's easier to destroy something than to build something. Atheists that have tried to build anything in the past have failed just the same as the Greeks and Romans, and so on and so on. When atheists start to step forward and build something, the they need to let us know. If they have something better and more meaningful to offer, then they should share that with the world. We'll be waiting. So where do I start with this? I guess at the beginning. What does it mean to be a deconverted man? De uh, okay, uh, so is this question asking what does it mean to be me? Or what does it mean to be somebody who has deconverted and is a man? Or like how deep should I try to answer this question? Like what, what do they mean? When they ask this question. I don't know what they mean. So I guess I'll answer it in both ways. What does it mean to be me? Something about lobsters more than likely. And logic's in there as well. And I don't know. Something to do with blue sheep. And uh, random things that I find. To show people on the camera. Because I do random things. And videos that I do. I guess that's what it means to be me, I, I suppose, to some extent. Uh, what does it mean to be deconverted? It usually means that you were converted into something like a religion, and then you left the religion. You deconverted from the religion. So, yeah, and then what it means to be a man is that you have, you know, um, you, you have something down there in between your legs, that, that wobbles back and forth and bangs against each other. And then you have this other thing that looks like a deformed elephant trunk that also swings around. And it's a, it's a no fun. So yeah, that's, that's what it means. But, but I'm no biologist, so don't go by by definition of what it means to be a man. So yeah. Somebody has editing skills, but what's the message? Didn't you watch the video? The message is in two parts. First... I'm submitting the idea that Jordan Peterson is suffering from cognitive dissonance. 
This is something that happens when you try to hold two opposing ideas in your head at the same time. My example of him having cognitive dissonance is from when he is saying to Dillahoney, well, did you, you said this, or, well, did you say that? Although the way that he frames the question is very close to the way that Kathy Newman framed her questions at him in the earlier interview. One can argue that I'm being a little bit harsh on Peterson, but he has said he chooses his language very carefully, but I didn't see that happening here. So I'm saying maybe this is an example of Peterson having some cognitive dissonance, and you can disagree with my view on that, that's fine. The other part of my message is my answers to the questions that were asked, which is the bulk of the video. So that's the message of the video. I mean, I guess if you didn't understand that, then I've failed somehow, or maybe you failed somehow. I'm not sure which, but I thought that the message of the video was pretty clear. Perhaps building unity is the concept of God. Okay, maybe. Then why do we need the word God? Just say building unity then. Just say, hey, let's build unity. Okay, great, let's do that. See, we don't need the word. If, we, if the word means something else, then we don't need that word. So if the concept of God is building unity, then we'll just say build unity and we don't need the word God at all. You said, remember, the idea of God is different than religion. Well, which religion are you thinking about? Because there might be a religion out there that thinks that religion equals God, or that God equals religion, or that God imposes a certain religion on people, or vice versa. So, which religion are you referring to here? Because it depends on which religion. The other question I would ask about this statement is, what God are you referring to? Because different religions have different concepts of God as well. So is it really distinct or are the two intertwined or can they be separate? Well, it depends on who you ask. Then you had some question about why Matt would go over the debate again. He's done that with every other debate that he's had. So you'd have to ask Matt Delaney directly why he did that. But I would strongly suspect that he does this as a self-analysis and self-critical examination of what he said and further thoughts that he has after the debate has been done, after the discussion is over, to think more deeply about what it is that happened and to re-examine it. Then he made this statement that would require you to provide proof, which is that we're born knowing the truth. Prove it. F from what studies do you have that makes that true? How do you know we're born knowing the truth? And then he made another claim about reality that we become jaded and twisted after that. Okay, prove that that's true. You need a study to show that. Then you said an appeal to emotion where that you don't want to call yourself a skeptic because it would make you feel like there's no meaning in life or whatever. Okay, and so that's your feeling. It's irrelevant to whether the title would be correct or not. It doesn't seem that it would be for you particularly, uh, but I don't know. Maybe you are a skeptic, but you just don't want to call yourself that because it makes you feel bad. For me, I don't care what the label is or how it makes me feel. If it's true or close enough to the truth, then I would take on that label, and so be it. But the feelings are irrelevant. And you go on to talk about Bill Meyer. Who cares? It's a, it's a tangent. Uh, making people laugh. People of religion do this as well. I've heard many jokes about atheists and and things like this come from Christian comedians. So what? And I don't know what how that makes somebody a god or makes it seem like they are one way or the other. Whether they're arguing uh, this, that, or the other thing or making fun of X, Y, and Z that just doesn't seem to be relevant one way or the other to if somebody is acting like a god or whatever that means. 
Uh, so you then said that it's a common theme that people are insulting in the atheist genre, community, whatever you want to call it. That might be the case. And so what's your point there? It might. So what? I, I've listened to plenty of Christians who spend a lot of time insulting uh, atheists, insulting Islam, insulting anything except for Christianity. So do I walk away with that with some sort of conclusion about their ideas? No, because their ideas are isolated from their behavior or should be. What is their argument and what does the argument lead to? Is the argument good or is it a bad argument? And what conclusions can be drawn from the argument? That's the question I should be asking. Because I've known really nice uh, theists, nice Christians, nice, uh, you know, whatever religion you want, throw it in there. And I've known really crappy ones. And I've known really nice atheists and really crappy ones. The sort of person is not relevant to the argument that they're presenting. And even if it's a trend that it happens to be that, well, you see people doing this a lot, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't tell you whether the arguments are true or false. As far as atheists seeing other systems of belief as silly or strange or stupid, that might be the case, but it depends on the atheist. And again, that's independent from whether or not the argument against that idea is sound or not. So, yes, it might be true that I find the views of flat earthers as ridiculously silly and stupid because those ideas are ridiculous and stupid. But, what's my argument against there being a flat earth? Or what, th what is their argument that the earth is flat? rather than round or spherical or whatever you know so examine the argument not the person you also said uh, this thing about atheists building things in the past and failing prove that that's true at all like what are you thinking about like what are you referring to that you think that atheists failed to build in the past it doesn't make any sense but I want to conclude on this statement. They generally don't, however, offer anything of meaning for those that seek meaning. I hope so. I hope that this is true. I hope that no atheist or skeptic ever tries to offer anyone meaning. And here's why. Your meaning is up to you. You decide what your purpose and your meaning is. You and no one else. No religion, no God, no government, no system can tell you what your meaning is. And if they try to, you say, no, I decide. I choose my meaning. I get to decide my own destiny. And I get to rewrite that every moment of every day to be whatever I want to be. And no one can tell me otherwise because I am my own person and I deserve to come to my own conclusions on what my meaning is. And so if this statement is true, I hope that it's true and I want it desperately to be true. And I wish that religions and people of all walks of life would come to the same conclusion that Telling somebody what their meaning is, is absolutely wrong. The only one that can decide their meaning is that own person because they are a free, independent agent that can come to that conclusion on their own. 